This video is going to be a quick review of the settings for FT8 and JS8 call using the TrueSDX transceiver. Notice that our setup is such that we have the TrueSDX transceiver connected to USB and to a power pack, 12 volts and 5 volts respectively. So then what we have essentially is, since both of these sources of voltage are connected, the higher voltage is the one that's going to be used by the logic of TrueSDX. Uh, also note that we have right here this uh, toroid and a USB. That's uh, for the mic for this recording. So please uh, don't pay too much attention to it. Before we go into the software, let's look at uh, a few menu options, such as 1.1 volume uh, for this. The other one to highlight is that 9.7 firmware software version is set to 2.00U. This is the beta version of the software. So heads up about that. So besides that, 1.2 indicates that our mode is USB as is standard for FT8 and JS8 call. The other one to bring your attention to is option 2.4, semi QSK. That one is set to off. Now for CW, uh, I like to have that one on, semi QSK, but for FT8, that needs to be set to off. So now, we are ready to, to connect using the software. The first thing that we do in the software is we start the true SDX driver. Uh, this was uh, developed by Guido, PE1NNZ. And note that it uses COM8 port. Now this one we don't close, we minimize. And for WSJTX, the thing we do is we just start WSJTX and the uh, application pops up and it comes up at this particular frequency. Let's go ahead and change that frequency to the 14074, which is the FT8 frequency uh, for, uh, for operations in this band in 20 meters. And we notice here that the true SDX has 14.074, so we're communicating to it. We're already decoding signals and such. Of course, in this one, you'd have to go ahead and make sure that your, your clock is synced, which it is in this case. So before going too far, let's look at the settings. And the settings show to be this. General tab is your personal information and preferences. Radio tab, you put Kenwood TS480. Your serial port should be at COM8 at a baud rate of 115,200. Your data and stop bits need to be default and your handshake option should be default also. DTR and RTS should be off. And uh, the PTT method is CAT. Front mic is your transmit audio source. USB is your mode, as we said, and no split operation. Now we go to the audio tab, and here we have for input and output, the cable output and cable input respectively using the audio virtual cable. So that's important. And uh, now we say okay. And at this point, we are working FT8. So here, of course, we would go ahead and say enable. And at this point, as soon as you do that, you see the transmission bar turns yellow and you see the T that just switched to R over here on the true SDX. So we just transmitted a quick CQ to any stations out there that might be wanting to have a QSO. Uh, and now this is standard FT8 operations, so not much to say there. Let me go ahead and move. And at this point, there are some strong signals, but let's move this one over to here. So we have the receive and the transmit windows right there. So at this point, there are some stations here, but remember also that we're using QRP signals. So the minus 10s or the minus 18s that you might have been able to get with other, uh, uh, other setups may not be so, so ready. For example, with an IC7300 or even with a, a Shigu G90, this minus 19 POTA station might be something that we could actually contact. What I'm finding is uh, that the five watts from this QRP rig may not give good results for these very faint signals. So this is how we do the FT8. Uh, I have had made contacts with this. It's just right now, there's not that many stations out there and, and it's very faint from what I can tell. So let's go ahead and stop our 
our uh, transmission. And let's uh, move on to JS8 call and look at the settings there. So in JS8 call, again, uh, what we notice is that we still have the true SDX driver on, and uh, we've just minimized him, he's still on. We launch JS8 call, and the JS8 call screen comes up. Since we were in the FT8 screen uh, with the app for FT8, the frequency shows to be 14074. Well, we want the JS8 call 20 meter frequency, which is 14.078. So there, now we're in the, the right frequency range. Let's look at the settings. You'll see that the settings are very much the same as with the FT8. General tab again, personal information. Radio tab shows Kenwood TS, TS480. Uh, CAD is the PTT, USB, front mic, and no split operation for rig options. CAD control, default, 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 across the board for data stop and handshake. DTR is set to, to nothing. And the serial port is to COM8 with 115,200 baud rate. Uh, your audio settings are again, just like FT8, cable output and cable input using the audio virtual cable. So with those options, uh, then uh, we, we go ahead and, uh, and try to contact the JS8 call. Let's run uh, Heartbeat. See if there's anybody out there that's set to automatically echo a heartbeat. Again, there's not many stations out there at this time of the day, so we may not be getting too many results. But again, this one has generated heartbeat replies, and so th this is actually working okay, just not at this time of the day. So those are the options for FT8 and JS8 call. For the Winlink Express operation, we notice the setup is exactly the same as for FT8 and JS8 call. We have the battery connected to the true SDX, and also we have the USB cable. Again, remember that the USB cable is gonna provide five volts and the battery is gonna provide 12 volts. So the logic inside the true SDX is gonna use the higher voltage from the battery. As far as this fellow right here, please disregard this. This is actually a toroid that I have for my microphone for making this recording. So right now then, on the computer, the first step, as before, we start the True SDX driver. And the True SDX driver, again, made by Guido, PE1NNZ, resets the True SDX and takes over COM8 port. So we minimize that and we start WinLink Express. WinLink Express comes up and we're going to type a quick note. We're gonna send this out to at arrl.net and this is going to be test from TrueSDX. And this will say this is a test from the true SDX at five volt, five watts output. And that's that. So now we post this to the outbox. We open the session. The Vara HF WinLink session comes up and we have the Vara WinLink display right here. So Let's go through the settings one by one. Settings, VARA setup. I happen to have a registration key. Other than that, I've entered KISS interface. The next setting is the sound card. We are going to the cable output, both for device input and device output. That's the uh, audio virtual cable. And I've noticed that for my 7300, when I ran this setup, I was using this setting right here. So that was doing that. So we'll reduce it down to that. Okay. And now for the settings in the session itself, VARA TNC setup has not been changed at all. And the setups for radio are at Kenwood Amateur, USB, COM8, 115,200 baud rate, RTS and DTR unselected. And the PTT port is to K480-MIC. So that's the settings. 
Now we go ahead and say start. And as you can tell, we are talking to the True SDX because the receive is switching to transmit. So that is actually having good effect. At this point, then we rely on Vara and actually the, the conditions to actually get us to, to the repeater. We'll try this repeater. And we notice that the true SDX has the right frequency. Start this up. And right now, Vara has gone ahead and found the uh, repeater at a bearing of 334 degrees, about 36 kilometers away. And we're getting a speed of about, well, we were getting at about 175 BPS. Okay, bits per minute is showing 747.
and the message seems to have gone through and the session is disconnected. So that shows that Vara has actually worked and uh, that concludes this video.